How do you try to cue them into that possibility? Mm -hmm. Or do you, do you just think that's another layer? How do you ne negotiate that difference between the page life and yeah. the embodied life of the poem? Well, you know, ideally, I would like the reader to have... We can just carry you around. Yeah, right. <laughs> like this is my, this is my chest go. right here. <laughs> uh, ideally, I'd like the reader to uh, walk away from the poem having read it in the same way that I, I would read it mm. and having them hear it in their mind the same mm -hmm. way I, I envision seeing it. I, I have no control over that. Uh, so I, all I can do is work with white space and line mm -hmm. breaks and, 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 the, and the functions of punctuation uh, in the best way I can to inform the reader and give them clues as to how mm -hmm. this poem is to be heard. But I also think that, you know, I wanted, I was very uh, fortunate I was on two slam teams, mm -hmm. Green Mill, Chicago, you know. Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm, <laughs> yep, what's up? And, um, and I learned a lot about the power of using the voice to join the poem, to, to, to take the poem from the page and make it really live in the audience. You mm -hmm. know, Patricia Smith, mm -hmm. you know, who was... Queen. Uh, yeah, was uh, uh, it's my colleague at College of Staten Island, and is uh, was also you know re hearing her read her work, and then seeing how vivid it was also on the page, made me you know was was the argument that's that made me say, okay, this is this really you know is possible to work in both directions. Mm -hmm. I could say the same for Yousef, you know, mm -hmm. and I could say. Um, same for uh, a few other folks, yeah. but but the idea is that the poem is not just on the page; it's it's in you, and you and when you bring it to other people, you're publishing it in their ears, mm. you know, mm. and and to uh, treat it as such, you know.